tonight. From Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Jarrett Stidham and the New England Patriots taking on Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. A moment ago, the pride of Massachusetts, the Patriots, introduced to this, as always, sold-out crowd as they get set to go head-to-head -head with the Buffalo Bills. Here's the putter, Jake Bailey, ready to do the honors. And we are underway in Foxborough. Isaiah McKenzie now on the return. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Play action, now it's Allen. And he's got the connection to Cole Beasley. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And time to give some credit to the big fellows, the offensive line here, because you've got to have good protection on crossing routes because you've got to give your receiver time to work all the way across the field. That time, able to scan the field, spot his receiver moving left to right. And Rush coming, and he's taken down. Matthew Judon in there to take him down. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. A situation they'll certainly want to avoid going forward in early second and long they're facing. Another try after the first down sack. Allen on the left side, he finds Beasley. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Allen now looks to throw. Forced out to his left. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. When they watch film of this game and hand out the grade sheets, he's going to really like getting a double plus on this play. Why? He scrambles and picks up a first down. But what else does he do? Protects himself by sliding and avoiding the big hit. Double plus, big time play.
So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 39-yard line. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front and linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. When a draw works, it can be a thing of beauty. But when it doesn't, oh, it can be ugly. And in this case, loss of yardage ugly. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. And now they'll throw with Allen. It's Knox, the tight end, making the catch. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Allen looks to throw on third and one. And he completes it to the tight end, Knox. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing, but four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they're looking at the sideline thing. Touchdown! And that's caught at the two. Cole Beasley. An 11-yard touchdown. And the Bills take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. Quite the drive there to get things started. They took up the bulk of the first quarter, and they end up in the end zone. And I love your last point. Ended up in the end zone. Because a lot of teams like those long drives, especially to keep their offense off the field, right? Keep the ball away from them but they finished it with a touchdown. That's the exclamation point. Now flip it over defensively. They've got to slow that down somehow, right? Maybe they need to be a little more aggressive, maybe a few more pressures towards the quarterback. Extra point forthcoming. And it's 7-0 Buffalo. So that drive consumes nine plays, all told. And it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And this will be brought out to the 25 as Taylor elects to not return it. Here are the Patriots to start on offense, led by the man from Auburn, standing 6'3", Jared Stidham. For a brief time, he was thought to be a possible successor to Tom Brady while he was still in New England, but that didn't materialize. But opportunity may still knock for him to start in the NFL today. Definitely has the arm and mobility to make plays against NFL defenses. All he needs now is consistency. Stidham going to lead the Pats up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll run with a former member of the Crimson Tide, Damian Harris. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Eight yards, the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two on the give. This is Harris. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Oh, 
On second down, it's Harris, and he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. Now a first down carry for Harris, and he'll take it across midfield and into Buffalo territory. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Working with second and five now. They hand this off to Harris. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me... Their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7 nothing ball game. We remind you that coming up in two minutes time, we'll hand you off to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. On the ground, it's Harris. 52 yards on the ground for him so far. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. On third down, here's Harris. And Harris is not going to get there. Great work defensively to stop him short. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. They run for it with Harris. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. So he needed one. He ended up getting three. And I really like the way he ran that one, too. That's really intelligent running because oftentimes a running back could get too greedy. Try and hit the home run on a play where you just need a few yards. Well done there, making sure he got the first down and not worrying about trying to get a touchdown. They run with Harris and tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. Heavy set out there on third and one. Harris. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Damian Harris, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Patriots are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. Well, they were looking to pick up the first down on third and short. They got a little more than they bargained for, finding the end zone as well. And oftentimes in short yardage situations, you get a lot of defenders stacked near the line of scrimmage, partner. So if you can get past that first wave, there's usually room to roam, and he found it. Full connects on the extra point, and we are tied here in the second quarter. So that, amazingly, a 17-play drive. And it was Damian Harris who finished things off with a touchdown run.
Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Returning it, Isaiah McKenzie. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Bills offense now for one final time in this first half. And they've got less than 30 seconds to go here, so not a lot of time to work with. A little under 30 seconds to go. We'll see how they play it here on first and 10. Here's Allen. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. Here's second and a yard. So the shotgun snap to Allen, out to his left. First down and more for Allen. And he's going to get this into enemy territory at the 45. The Bills are going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Here's Allen on first and 10. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. Defensively, Charles, they continue to really limit this offense as far as yardage goes. Yeah, you're exactly right. They've been assignment sound, staying in their lanes, keeping proper leverage, and communicating well, too. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this game will remain tied here in quarter number two. The long distance shot before break comes up empty, but now Charles flipped the script. Time for likely one more play as field position becomes an issue. Yeah, when you talk about field position, remember, if this kick is missed, the ball comes back to where? The spot that they snapped it from. So field position becomes a factor. I think at this spot, you might also want to think about throwing the Hail Mary. You know, put the ball up in the air. Maybe you can get six out of it instead of three. Yeah, see what happens. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, we'll get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. Taylor decides not to try to return it, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. For the Patriots taking over to start quarter number three. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. Watch the twist. Watch the twist. Again, it's Harris on second down. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. 91 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. A give to Harris. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. On first down. It's Harris, and he'll take it across midfield and into Buffalo territory. Working with his second and four. Now a handoff, Stevenson, and this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork and add in a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Back to Stevenson on first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. 
The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Now Harris. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. They'll run. Here's Harris. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. The second and seven with our score tied at seven. But they're planning to change that soon. Only question, will they get three or six out of it? On the handoff, Stevenson. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave them with a third and about five. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. On third down, Harris. Oh, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. It's a pickup of four, but they're still a yard short here with fourth down, fourth coming. Temptation there certainly to go for this, but I think you have to kick it, right? The temptation coming from the fantasy owners, right? <laughs> I mean, there are some that are going to want to kick it because they may have that kicker, but overall, get more yardage, maybe a chance for a touchdown, but no, absolutely not. Run that field goal kicker out there. Kick it. you got to take the chance to take the lead right now. You don't want to put it back on your defense. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Here's Harris. And he'll get about three just outside the 10, stopped at the 11. He's had success on this drive, but not on this play. Finally, they bowed up defensively. I think they were determined not to let him take it pretty much all the way down the field. Yeah, it looks like they handled their run responsibilities correctly this time. What we call them run fits, everyone was in the right place. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Here we go, third and one. Gut check time on both sides. This is Harris. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. I like this focus there because he wasn't thinking about breaking that one big. All he thought about was, I need one. Let's go get that. Ended up picking up two. Harris. Able to get a couple here, but won't get across the plane as they stop him right around the one. Second and goal from the one. White is into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know that sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite, but the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Now Folk for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that about as lengthy a drive as you're ever going to see. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run.
Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. On the return, it's McKenzie. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Allen and the Bills now down 14 to 7. Just over two minutes to go. They'll have one play here just north of the two-minute warning. Allen now on first down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's Allen to throw it. Into the hands of Singletary. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. We've got a one-score game with inside of two minutes remaining. So it's Bill's football here as we get you reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Allen's throw here, taken in by Knox. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Allen. And he's got his man here, Beasley. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there and for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. A throw over the middle taken in. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Throwing is Allen. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. First down now, but that clock rolling. And it's caught. It's a touchdown. So they rally here in the final minute, and they're an extra point away from tying this game. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. Tyler Bass now for the point after. And no sweat, he puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. So this drive spans seven plays, and the touchdown and PAT mean we are tied here in the final minute of play. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll put it out to the 25. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. Harris going to get it again on second down. And he'll have a first down to the 45, but the tackle comes inbounds. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as the clock stops with 23 seconds to go in the game. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. This is Harris. And that's not going to help a whole lot. Maybe four yards on first down. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. Second and six. Now Stidham. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Couple extra defensive backs out there in the dime. And because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dime? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You having to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And now they're going to get the timeout. A huge play has him in field goal range with a chance to win.
So here now is the kicker, Nick Folk. With three seconds to go, this for the win. And the 13-year man puts it through. And it'll be a good time in the back bay tonight. The Patriots have won the football game. So this will wind up a victory for the New England Patriots. And you look back over the score sheet, interesting. A very clean game, no turnovers by either side. An absolute rarity when we watch games now because defenses have put such an emphasis on taking the ball away. Well, what we saw here was offense is spending their time saying, look, you know they're coming for it. Ball security is paramount. So they worked on that, not just a week of practice, but I'm sure all during training camp. Make sure when you have it, tuck it away because danger lurks everywhere you turn. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Patriots winners here at home as we say so long from Foxborough. Tonight, from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Jarrett Stidham and the New England Patriots taking on Zach Wilson and the New York Jets. From the area known as Patriot Place, EA Sports set for football at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. All the success in New England over the last few decades, and this crowd has never been more enthusiastic. A moment ago, the Pats emerged from their locker room. They are set as they'll square off with the New York Jets.
Here's the putter, Jake Bailey, ready to do the honors. And we are underway in Foxborough. Here's Coleman now to return. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now Wilson. And this will be well too low for him to bring in. It's incomplete. Maybe a little over anxious in the pocket there. He just didn't look comfortable on that throw. No, he didn't because it wasn't his normal fluid delivery. And I think you might have had it right. Wasn't really confident with what he saw downfield and almost felt like he wanted to pull that one back. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. And he finds Tyler Croft. And he gets this deep into Patriot territory. Big yardage that time for the Jets. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. To throw is Wilson. And he's got him. Got his man on the end route. Complete. And the Jets are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taking them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up with a first and goal. To throw again is Wilson. That's to Davis. He's got it. Touchdown, New York. Corey Davis there to make the grab. And the Jets have taken a first quarter lead. Those are the drives that prove a lot. You got a rookie quarterback, Charles. You're on the road, takes him down, throws the touchdown pass. And in a game like this, with, as you described, a rookie quarterback, the team usually says, okay, we got to take care of this guy. We got to protect him. But when he goes out and plays like this on the first drive on the road, he doesn't have to say, I'm here to be your leader. They just need to follow him. Eddie Pinheiro now for the extra point.
And his kick is good, but flags come in. Looks like we're going to get a roughing call here on the follow through. What's the deal, y'all? So the extra point good and the roughing call going to move the ball out to the 50 for the kickoff. And I think this is a good chance to pin them deep if you can land the kickoff inside the five-yard line or so. Gain some field position for your defense. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Stidham going to lead the Pats up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll run with a former member of the Crimson Tide, Damian Harris. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. Second and six, just inside the 30. On the give, this is Harris. He'll have a first down past the 40. And he's got it across the 50 to the 47-yard line. That outside handoff to the left, that play has to warm the heart of an offensive line coach because they controlled the left side where they were supposed to, but they didn't allow anything to leak from the back side on the right side of the offensive line either. Well played. Yeah, and it created a big run. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They hand this off to Harris, and he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. First carry now for Ramondre Stevenson. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. Each team has its own terminology. Some people call it jumbo. Some call it monster. Some call it king. But it doesn't really matter. They brought in a big lumber to pick up that first down. Yeah, you think about goal line defense with the goal line offense that time getting it done. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. 47 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. They'll run it here. This is James White. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. On second down, this is Harris. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. It'll be a gain of five there as they move closer. It's second and goal. They'll try and run with Harris. And this is not going to do it as he stopped at the two-yard line. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. And Harris is not going to get there. Great work defensively to stop him short. Only a yard there, so it brings up fourth and goal. They'll try and throw for it with Stidham. That's to Aguilar. Touchdown, Patriots. A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Patriots are within an extra point of tying this one up. Big fourth down conversion for the score and the defense. That is a tough pill to swallow. Big time for them. How about them just deciding to go for it on fourth down and, oh, okay, forget the field goal because that looked like an easy three points. 
Yeah, you might have had a defensive breakdown in there, but they pressed the issue and found a way to get it into the end zone. Give them big credit for that. Extra point up and good by Folk, and we are tied here in the second quarter. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told, and it's finished off by a Pats touchdown. Each team's had it. Each team has scored 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And this taken in at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Back onto the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offensive sales because they had it going pretty good last time, too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Play action, it's Wilson. He's gonna look deep for more. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Devin McCourty picks it off, and he'll take it across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. The rookie was trying to push it downfield, but the safety bit him. And he'll learn that you have to hold the safety, and you do that with your head movement, your eyes, sometimes your shoulders. Hold the safety so that you can get back to the throw that you really want to make. He got so excited thinking his guy was open that he made it easy for the defensive back to go get the football. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. All knotted up at seven. A reminder coming up in a couple of minutes' time, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman, the coach in our EA Sports studios. He'll have a look back at the next-gen stats from this first half of action. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. A good chance this is four-down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. They push forward, but I don't think it's enough. He's going to be about a yard short. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. <laughs> How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. And hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts. As the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. On third down, here's Harris. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. They run with Harris. And this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done. Down to the 15 from the 21. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. I know you feel that. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. 
And Folk's kick is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So they wind up turning the turnover into points as they convert there for three. Yeah, that was a nice job there to force the fumble. They recover, hand things over to their offense, and then the offense went down and got them three. That alone, that's not enough to win a game, but both units able to do their jobs on these last two drives. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. Here's Coleman now to return. So we've reached halftime here at Gillette Stadium with the Patriots on top. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams as they've already made their way back out of the locker room. So to bring you the story of the second half, let's get you right back out to Brandon God. Okay, Coach. Yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. So here we go for half number two. The Patriots with the lead, and they will be getting the football. And this will be brought out to the 25 as Taylor elects to not return it. But the Patriots taking over to start quarter number three. And they've got the lead, CD. What do you expect from them in this second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I'd keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. And he's going to have a Patriots first down as he's got this past the 35 to about the 37. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. And he'll take this one for about four up to the 40. End result of that one, a nice four yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play action game or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field and make a run as we just saw there. And he will have a Patriots first down, at least at first glance, as he'll spot the football just beyond the marker. They find a way to convert on third and inches. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. But they went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. They'll run with Harris. And he'll take it across midfield down into Jet territory. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. In your face. On the ground, it's Harris. He'll get about four here, down to the 43-yard line. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. And he will have a Patriots first down by a couple of yards as they're able to convert there on third and one. Well, this has been a long drive. In fact, it's eating up a good chunk of the third quarter, which is precisely what you want when you're playing with the lead. You control the football, you control the clock, and impose your will on the defense.
They show run with three tight ends here on first down. A give to Harris. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. 129 yards rushing for him now as his big night continues. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. They'll try and run for the first with Stevenson. And he will have a Patriots first down. It won't be by much. He needed three and he got three, barely. But the mark shows first down. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. And they run with Stevenson. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Now a handoff, Stevenson. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. Able to stay in bounds, so the clock keeps rolling. And this defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in. And all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold him up. Second, third guy in, rake it the football. Get it out. We've got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. This a big play for both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. From the two now, second and goal. White. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. And give him two yards officially, and now it'll be third and goal. Three points separating these two sides with two minutes left to go in the fourth. So the Patriots with a football as we get you reset. They've got it third and goal now as they look for that final touchdown to salt this one away. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. Here we go, a big play in a tight game late. They're going on fourth and goal. They'll try and power it home here with a fullback Johnson. Now he's over the line and into the end zone for a Patriots score. It's the fullback taking it in. And the Patriots add six to their lead. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to salt this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in the amount of time they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt away the game drives. What makes them successful? Well, when you're able to mix run pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains, I'm using every cliche I know, <laughs> but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays, and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. On for the extra point is Folk. It's good to make it 17-7. So that about as lengthy a drive as you're ever going to see. And it ends with a New England touchdown.
Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Here's Coleman now to return. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. So here is Wilson and the Jets down by 10, a minute 51 on the clock. Their offense has struggled all night, and now they need to find two scores late to try to pull this thing out. Wilson to throw. And that's complete to Davis. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Throwing now is Wilson. Pass caught by Crowder. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now Wilson. That's complete. It's Elijah Moore. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. And we've reached the one-minute mark in this game. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Devin McCourty picks it off. And the Patriots are going to take over once again at their own 37-yard line. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college and the defensive backs reacted, but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result can be something you don't like. They begin the drive on the ground. It's white. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Now the Jets going to use the second of their three timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in the fourth. I'm after you. On second down, they go back to White again. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. First down, here's White. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. On the handoff, this is White. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. So this will wind up a victory for the New England Patriots. And, you know, it wasn't a shutout. They did give up the points in the first quarter. But second, third, and fourth quarter, they held them score. Tonight, from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Jarrett Stidham and the New England Patriots taking on Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us roughly midway between Boston and Providence. Everybody knows it as Gillette Stadium in Foxborough.
A moment ago, the pride of Massachusetts, the Patriots, introduced to this, as always, sold-out crowd as they get set to go head-to-head -head with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Here's the putter, Jake Bailey, ready to do the honors. And we are underway in Foxborough. Jamal Agnew now to return it. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Ready, ready, 15, 1. 
On first and 10, it's Lawrence. They're connecting here with DJ Shark. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. When the hitch route is run really well, that jab step off the line of scrimmage by the receiver, which is designed to back up the defender and give him a little bit of space, all you want there, get that space, catch the football, and then make a move and pick up extra yardage. And that's exactly what he got done there. Three yards the game there, second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. And his throw here is incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Lawrence going to throw again. That's caught. It's Dan Arnold, the tight end. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. And the pocket's been protected pretty good here so far on the opening drive. We always talk about confidence in runners and catchers and quarterbacks. How about the protection detail? They're not allowing anyone near the guy throwing the football. Lawrence on third down. The open man is Shark. It's complete. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive. And they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them. And now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed, makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Another 13 yards there twice in a row, and they're on the move. Another first down as well. And they'll run it. This is James Robinson. And he's going to work this one down to about the five. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. This will be play number nine coming up on this relatively long opening drive as they look to convert on third down. Right there, Chenault for the Jacksonville touchdown. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Jaguars drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. That was a really good opening drive on a number of fronts. Ten plays, very methodical, set the tone. So you know right now, if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're on the sideline saying, okay, what do we have to dial up in order to get off the field a lot faster? Because both sides are out there for ten plays, but one side comes off energized, and the other side comes off with some questions. Out comes the kicking team here for the extra point. And this is up and good. The score now 7-0 Jaguars. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. On the return is J.J. Taylor. 
And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. So out come the Patriots here to get their first shot on offense. They'll be let out by their quarterback at 6-2 out of Auburn. It's Jared Stidham. For a brief time, he was thought to be a possible successor to Tom Brady while he was still in New England, but that didn't materialize. But opportunity may still knock for him to start in the NFL today. Definitely has the arm and mobility to make plays against NFL defenses. All he needs now is consistency. Stidham going to lead the Pats up first and 10 at their own 26. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. They hand this off to Harris, and he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Now a first down carry for Harris, and he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. On second down, this is Harris. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. On the give, this is Harris. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. Another down on the scoreboard, but the urge to go for it is almost irresistible here on fourth and short. Yeah, I know. I know they're on their own side of the uh, field. I was going to say. Normally, I would say punt the ball away, but I'm feeling it. I say go for it. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. Thought they might throw the football with a little chunk that they had remaining on fourth down, but they ran it. They got it. And the reason they were able to get it done, he ran that play with conviction, didn't he? Understood he would get a little bit of help from his friends up front, but it was really on him to go ahead and make the power move and get it done, and that he did. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Harris. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Yeah, once more, strong running, excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10 on the handoff, Stevenson. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. This is Harris. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 54 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. They'll run, here's Harris. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. Second and goal from inside the five. When you look at the geography we're staring at, this part of the field, don't you always think of big backs carrying the football, bruisers trying to pound it in? Instead, we're looking at a little more of a scat back type, and he's trying to make it happen. Yeah, they went with the elusive, slippery guy. Couldn't get in there, though. And he is in. Touchdown, New England. James White. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Patriots are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. And a little time left on the clock, so on the other side, they're thinking, gosh, we'd like to get that lead right back. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Here I am <laughs> going ahead and tapping out the first half. Well, There's still time. Way. They've got to make a decision about what they want to do on the kickoff, whether they want to let their return guy touch it.
Nick Folk for the point after. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. That drive, a long one, spanning 15 plays, and it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. To return, here's Agnew. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Go. Go. The Jags going to go on offense now late in this first half. And they've got a little under 40 seconds to go if they want to try to put something together here. On first down, Lawrence. Finds the open target, Arnold. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. They'll come up now on second and a yard. Now Lawrence. This is Chenault on the receiving end. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Arnold. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be spotted just shy of midfield, a 59-yard attempt. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over to spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. New England with a first down as they begin the drive. And with great starting field position up near the 50, they might be one completion away from stealing a late field goal here. Stidham's throw pulled in by Aguilar. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. The big completion there, and he gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Very heady football. That allows them the opportunity to go ahead and line up and kick one right before the half ends. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, throwing back across his body. Nevin Lawson with a pick, and he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. So a touchdown apiece. That's what we have to show at halftime as they head to the locker room. 7-7 seven, seven our score. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports halftime report. His guys have the lead as we'll hand it back over to our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. Taylor now to return it. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Well, the Patriots taking over to start quarter number three. A tale of two extremes already in this game. A touchdown pass on their opening drive, followed by an interception last time out. Now, it sounds like things balance out, right? What's that, that mythological thing that we do? If you have a candy bar, have a diet soda with it, and it balances it out. And we know that's not really true, right? Because the interception, that sting lingers a little bit longer. Got to come out now and put together some nice plays. Stidham going to lead the Pats up first and 10 at their own 24. They turn to Harris to begin the drive. 
And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 82 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 13 times. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Well, CD, a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but, man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast the linebackers don't have a chance to react. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. I know flashy plays, splashy plays, as people like to call them. That attracts a lot of attention. But let's face it, when you're efficient, that can control a ball game. And I love the game plan they've got going right now. Back-to-back five-yard gains. Didn't force the ball downfield. Picked it up on the ground. Yeah, offensive line, they're getting it done. Let's go, baby. Let's go. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. And he'll take it inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. Dewan Smoot with a tackle. Again, it's Harris on second down. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. On third down, a run from White. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Fourth and two in the NFL, not ordinarily a running down anymore. Usually that ball is moved through the air. They went ahead and gave it to the back, and he ends up picking up the first down. I'm not sure if they fooled him as much as they just did a nice job executing. Needed two, and they got three. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Harris, and he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. A give to Harris. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. They run with Harris, and he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Damian Harris, a five-yard touchdown run, and the Patriots have taken the lead. And he was excellent on that drive. He deserved to be the one to get across the chalk. Oh, I agree with you totally. A workhorse on the drive. And how about that last decisive run to punch it in? Now Folk for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it was Damian Harris who finished things off with a touchdown run.
Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. To return, here's Agnew. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set here. And now after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. Completing it here to Marvin Jones. And he's going to be down at the 35, gain of seven. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. We'll definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. Now Lawrence on first down. And Shark calls it in. Touchdown, Jaguars. DJ Shark. 53 yards. And the Jaguars are an extra point away from tying this game here on the fourth. And they just ran the fly route there, didn't they? You broke it down perfectly. He ends up catching that one and taking it all the way into the end zone. Well, thanks. It was pretty simple to break down, though. I mean, that, that's just a guy going, running on the go route, making a play. Speed. Kills. Speed. <laughs> speed. And what does it do? It kills. There you go. Now the try here for the point after. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. Let's go, let's go. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Taylor decides not to try to return it, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. New England's offense set to go. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. Looks like he's going to get a couple here on this first down carry, and that'll make it second and eight. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Now here's another carry for Harris. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 155 yards on the ground for him now as he has gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. They've got it first and 10 as they search for a go-ahead score. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now... In this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. On second down now, it's Harris. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. And everybody thinking about the possible field goal on fourth. It would be 58 yards from here. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Now a timeout called for by the defense. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Here's Harris. And a short gain down to about the 33. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just 70 seconds left to go in the game. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. 
This is Harris. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with 65 seconds remaining. By the way, you'd be looking at about a 47-yarder from here as they come up on an important third down. Now Harris. And he's going to be taken down here still a couple yards short of the first. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. But forget knowing where the first down line was. This defense created their own line of scrimmage. They won every battle up front, and a lot of times that is one-on-one. -on -one. And if you win your one-on-ones enough times, your defense is going to be pretty good. They had more people to the football and snuffed out the play. And try to push his way forward, but I think he's going to be short. And he is short. He needed two. He only got one. And the Jaguars are going to take possession here on the turnover on downs. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. They'd like to avoid overtime here, so maybe they can work the sidelines, but then defensively, how do they adjust to that if they do work the sideline? It's the old leverage game, and we usually talk about leverage at the line of scrimmage, right? Who's going to win with the low blocking and everything that goes along with that? But in this case, you're trying as a defender to leverage them towards the middle of the field, not let them get to the sidelines and try and tackle them in bounds in order to run the clock out. Chess match here late. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. On the return, it's Taylor. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. New England trotting into place on offense. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. Two yards on the first down carry and then followed up by two yards on the second down carry. Well, that's definitely not going to be enough to get the job done. Wasn't the expression three yards in a cloud of dust? <laughs> now they're going to need six on third down to keep the drive going. On third down, here's Harris. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Well, they only need about a half a foot. It's overtime, but they're back in their own territory. And you know those decision makers that are battling inside the head coach's mind right now? One saying, hey, offense is pretty good. Other one saying, no, 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 rely on your defense. That's what you've got to decide in this situation. Where do you have the confidence? That determines what you're going to do. If he writes a book in the offseason, he ought to title it Undaunted because where he is on the field, back on his own side and goes for it and gets it i gotta give it to him on that one yeah only thing you can justify it with is it was only a few inches that they needed if it's fourth and two probably doesn't do it hey he got it give him credit yeah but if they don't pick it up then you're giving, in trouble yeah they're giving points <laughs> to the other team at that stage call it a gain of five there on the run but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, so if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. On the handoff, this is White. And he'll take this one down to the 36. A gain of two there on the heels of a one-yard pickup on first. What will they draw up to try to keep this opening drive of overtime moving? Third and seven. 
And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. He's just short. He got six of the seven he needed, so that leaves a decision here on fourth and a yard. And now before they run this play on fourth and one, we're going to get a break and a timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. So a big move here, playing to win in overtime. They're going to go for it on fourth down. They'll run for it. This is White. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Now White. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. And I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, raking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. First down, here's White. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. So the OT clock hits zero, and we're still not done. We'll switch sides and need at least one more OT to decide it after this. They're looking at a second and eight now from the 10. Now a handoff, Stevenson. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. 44 yards rushing for him now as he is just trying to will his guys to an overtime victory. And they're going with some extra beef up front. They've got to have this one in overtime. It's third and one. Again, it's Stevenson. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. We needed extra time to decide this one. The rushing score and OT finishes it off, but all throughout, really just a great game to witness. I agree, and, and the whole time we were watching and, and working,
tonight. From Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Jarrett Stidham and the New England Patriots taking on Daniel Jones and the New York Giants. From a venue that's been sold out since it opened back in 2002, there's a look at the home of the Patriots, Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. All the success in New England over the last few decades, and this crowd has never been more enthusiastic. A moment ago, the Pats emerged from their locker room. They are set as they'll square off with the New York Giants.
They've played two of the more memorable Super Bowls in recent history. The Giants and Patriots are underway again. On the return, it's Farrow Cooper. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. Barkley with a carry on first down, and he'll get about four. So second and six, forthcoming. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Now this pass into the hands of Saquon Barkley. So give him two yards there on the completion. And that'll lead here to a third down. Now Jones. Out to the right here to Shepard. And he will have a Giants first down. They needed four. He doubled that. He wound up getting eight. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yes. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. Throwing Jones. This one goes out wide for Barkley. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. from just shy of midfield. Jones, and Rudolph has it, the tight end. And he's got another first down as the tackle's gonna be made at the Patriots 39. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case though, He's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. On second down, here's Barkley. And he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback, makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Oh, there's going to be a little bit of regret there, because they certainly had the chance to get off the field here, just giving up a field goal attempt. But they couldn't get that stop on third down. Now they have to hunker down, because guess what? That drive continues. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Off play action. Jones to Barkley on the check down. Call it a gain of a yard. And all of a sudden here, it's third down. We're scoreless after one. Giant football, and we're ready to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a third down coming up. From the gun, Jones. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. And the Giants are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And oftentimes we think about statement drives in the second halves of games, especially in the fourth quarter. But here, it's happening early, a definite statement. They've held on to the ball for a healthy portion this first quarter already. And now after that completion, they're set up first and goal. It's a gain of a yard and it'll set up second and goal. Barkley again. And this is not gonna do it as he stopped at the two yard line. And the question now, can the Patriot defense hold firm again on third and goal? Looking to throw, Jones. And Ingram's got it. Touchdown, Giants. 
Two yards on the touchdown there. And the Giants take it right down and score on the opening drive. Well, that drive felt like it took up an eternity. We finally have some action on the scoreboard. Yeah, but plenty of action prior to because that drive took up all the first quarter before we spilled into the second. And finally, points were registered. On the other sideline, they're chomping at the bit just to get the football. Graham Gano on for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and the Giants have a 7-0 lead. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told, and it was polished off by a Giants touchdown. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. They're coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. First carry for Damian Harris, the Alabama man. And yeah, this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. They hand this off to Harris. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7 nothing ball game. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coach's two-minute drill. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. On third down, it's Harris, and he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. You know it was tough for them to stand on the sidelines and watch the other team take it downfield and score, wasn't it? So they knew when they got on the field, it's on them. Pick up first downs, get downfield and score. How about them picking up that third and short? I was just going to say, you and I were talking before the game, those third down conversions are going to be huge in this one. 40 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. And little room to maneuver there. He gets it down to about the 39. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. On the give, this is Harris. And he'll be brought down just outside of the 30. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. This will be play number eight here on the drive. It's third and a yard. Harris. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. Now a first down carry for Harris. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. I hope we give enough respect to the big guys up front because they have been getting it done on this drive. The holes have been large, and they've been barreling through them, picking up first downs. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Damian Harris in the final seconds of the first half. And the Patriots have a chance to tie the game here in the final seconds of the half. Final play of the half, it's Stidham. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. 
So what do you think the mindset was there? You can tie it with a PAT here first half. Why go for the lead right now? The old school mindset says if you have a better team, you just go ahead and continue to try and dominate. There's also a school of thought. If you don't think you're quite as good, you have to try and take Broadcast to the beginning of the third quarter. The Patriots trailing here, but they will have the football first as the third quarter is underway. And this will be brought out to the 25 as Taylor elects to not return it. Damian Harris to the Patriot offense ready to take over again. You see the numbers, all those carries. If you get that many carries in the drive, you better <laughs> finish it with a touchdown. And, and he did. Yeah, and, and deservedly so, right? Because we've seen times like the Carolina Panthers, sometimes Jonathan Stewart to carry the ball the way down, and then Cam, he's such a great goal line runner, he'll carry it in. But in this case, though, that didn't happen. The fellow lugging the load, he's the one who got to reap the reward. Yeah, there was no touchdown vulture here. So the drive takes him into Giants territory now, first and 10 at the 46. They'll run. Here's Harris. Here we go. Here we go. He had a really solid first half running the football and picking up where he left off here in the third quarter. How about the yardage he's piling up right now? This feels like a full game, not just a series that we're watching right now. I know people are screaming, where are the adjustments from halftime on the defensive side of the ball? Sometimes they're just not there. Sometimes you just got to find a way to tackle someone. On second down, this is Harris. And he's going to get this pretty close to the first down marker at the Giants 24. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Harris going to get it again on second down. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. After a gain of five, they'll wind up being about a length of the football short here on third down. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. On the handoff, Stevenson. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. Now that's a gain of six on the first down run. The last run got six, now second and four. This is Harris. Now he's over the line and into the end zone for a Patriot score. Damian Harris, his second touchdown of the night, and the Patriots have taken the lead. Hard to argue with that being their best drive of the game so far as they use the running game to get them into the end zone. Couldn't agree more, partner, prior to that drive. They sputtered a little bit, but it looks like they found the formula. I would expect them to go back to that more and more as this game develops. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. Instead, I'm going to look to throw for it. Eluding the pressure right. And he will find the end zone here, and the lead moves up to seven. And that was the old QB one-man band play there on the conversion. And look, let's face it, even quarterbacks who don't have great mobility, in certain situations, they're able to actually take the ball in themselves. Remember way back when Joe Namath against the I Giants knew you were at going the Yale Bowl, right? Remember Joe had all those knee operations. They thought he couldn't run it. No one accounted for him. He practically walked into the end zone.
Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Cooper on the return. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. So the Giants getting the football back here for their second drive. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Jones. Oh, able to avoid him. And he's brought down after a very nice game. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. On second down, Barkley. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. That's going to go down as a loss of five, and it brings up third down. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense was pretty vocal about its desire to take this running back out of his game. And all that pregame wolfing has turned into results. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. Meanwhile, Jones' throw here pulled in by Galladay. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. It's hauled in by Shepard. Down he goes at the 10 with a solid pickup of eight. Only needing two yards on second down. Jones with a handoff to Barkley. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the That's to Galladay, and he's got it. Touchdown, New York. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the Giants are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. And we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth-quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Gano for the extra point. And no sweat. He puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. So that drive goes eight plays, and it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Taylor decides not to try to return it, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Damian Harris to the Patriot offense, ready to take over again. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just kind of have a grin on his face every time his number is called because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big-time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. 157 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. 
So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they search for a score to break this tie. And he's going to have a Patriots first down as the tackle made at about the 43-yard line. I'd have to say that was a pretty darn good run right there. They had seven, what, eight in the box, still able to burn them. They've got to consider themselves lucky they only gave up a first down and not a touchdown. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Here's Harris. Shows his strength at the 50. He finds some open field here. And all the way in. Touchdown, New England. Damian Harris. 57 yards and the Patriots strike quickly to take the lead here in the fourth hey that score deserves our respect deserves our excitement but I'm looking at the clock and I'm thinking there's a long way to go in this one ideally they would have liked to milk a little bit more time off now on the other sideline you start to get the crew together and say this is what we practice the two minute drill for right yeah you hope you've been in that situation before and if you have it you just have the confidence, hey, let's go down there and get this thing done. But boy, that's a big score right there to give them the advantage. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Cooper on the return. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. They're down here in a one-score game, but the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Now Jones throwing deep for Galladay. And this one is incomplete. Whew, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 27-yard line. Jones. Open man right side is Ingram. And yes, he's into the end zone. So they get the late score they needed. And now the extra point can tie this thing up in the final minute. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets ahead of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And partner, we've got a tie game here in the fourth. A couple of teams locked into a good one here. 21 all the score as the kick's away. And with time of factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll start things out at the 25. Harris starts the drive on the ground. And they'll get him down after a gain of seven, but they'll happily give him that. My goodness, 229 yards for him on the ground as this has been a night to remember to this point. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. They run again with Harris. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. And with inside of 10 seconds, eight to be precise, we get whistles and a timeout on the field. Get him. Escaping the pressure right. 
The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Cooper on the return. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. Except for their first drive here in overtime. And this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day. Oh, wide open, complete. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. Well, you never know what you're going to expect when you come to the stadium to call a game. Sometimes you get good ones. Sometimes you get bad ones. Sometimes you get great ones. And that's what we had here. What an exciting finish on that last big play. And I think that as we look at it, when you're talking about a great finish, which went along with a game that obviously was dramatic because we did get into overtime, what type of play calls do you have left? What have you not shown or what have you made an adjustment to what you've worked out all the way through that's going to give you the play we saw to win the game? Because I know everyone's thinking that that was something that they just drew up. It might have been something they've been working on, and now they got the right matchup. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you prime the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. From Foxborough, good night, everybody.
tonight. From Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Jarrett Stidham and the New England Patriots taking on Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Mass. A moment ago, the pride of Massachusetts, the Patriots, introduced to this, as always, sold-out crowd as they get set to go head-to-head -head with the Cleveland Browns. Here's the putter, Jake Bailey, ready to do the honors. And we are underway in Foxborough. Taking it about the one. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. First down, Mayfield. And it's hauled in by Austin Hooper. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early, something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Good job there of getting his tight end involved because he lines up on the right side of the formation, just works his way across the field. I really like how they were in sync on that one. He spotted the open gap in the zone, and his quarterback found him, and they get a first down. Man, he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Now Mayfield, and finding the tight end, Hooper. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this is starting. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Another 13 yards there twice in a row, and they're on the move. Another first down as well. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. Now they return to the ground game. Chubb, and not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Second and seven. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Uh, here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Now a first and 10 at the 11. 
Uh, first carry now for Kareem Hunt. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Mayfield gives this one to Hunt, and he's in. Touchdown, Browns. Kareem Hunt taking it in from four yards out, and the Browns take it right down the field and score on the opening drive. So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Chase McLaughlin on for the extra point. It's up and through to make it 7-0 Browns. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And Kareem Hunt, the one to finish it off as he did so with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And this will be brought out to the 25 as Taylor elects to not return it. So here come the Patriots now to take over on offense. They'll be let out by their quarterback at 6-2 out of Auburn. It's Jared Stidham. For a brief time, he was thought to be a possible successor to Tom Brady while he was still in New England, but that didn't materialize. But opportunity may still knock for him to start in the NFL today. Definitely has the arm and mobility to make plays against NFL defenses. All he needs now is consistency. Play clock down to zero, and this is not the way to start a drive. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now, first and 15 following the delay of game. Now Harris. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. Pardon, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. They'll run on first down. Harris, and he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Second down at four. They run with Harris, and very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. And he will have a Patriots first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. A give to Harris. 
42 yards rushing for him now to this point. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. On second down now, it's Harris. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. Working his way for a gain of seven to the 26. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. This is Harris. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. This has been a good drive so far, and it's been the running game for the most part that's powered them down there. Another nice burst there, picking up a first down. Now it's first and 10, as you said, in the red zone. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. That's a good shot. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7-0 ball game. On second down, it's Harris. And all the way down inside the five to the four. Let's go, let's do it. The running game's played a huge part in getting them down to this point on the field. I say stay with it. Keep pounding the football. Keep driving, keep grinding. Yeah, even down in the red zone, keep going for it. No doubt about it. Dance with what brung you. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. Second and goal from the one. They'll try to run with Harris, and he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Damian Harris punching it in from a yard away. And the Patriots are within an extra point of tying this one up. So they brought the extra bulk in down on the one-yard line, and they're able to push this one across. Yeah, I can just see your face right now because I know we're mind-melding on this one. Coach Madden would love this. Power football, hat on a hat, chest to chest, driving forward, touchdown. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. It's interesting that when it comes to two-point conversions, even heavy run teams tend to throw the ball in these situations. In this case, this one was intercepted. Yeah, they weren't fooled. They were ready for the pass, picked it off. This will be fielded inside the five and able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And still plenty of time remaining here in the half, more than a minute. And we'll see if they just want to protect that lead or try to add on to it. Well, with as much time as is left on the clock, I would imagine it would be the latter. I think they're going to try and add on to it. So what they're going to tell the team is very simply, if you can get out of bounds after making a play downfield, terrific. If you can't, everyone hustle to the line of scrimmage, either run another play or clock it and start over again. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. Got a man, that's Rashard Higgins. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Throwing again on second down. Mayfield, man open, that's Anthony Schwartz. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots 42. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. He's got Hooper on the short connection. And they'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive, and here he finds his big tight end for good yardage, and that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Kyle Van Noy, he's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. So we come upon halftime, and it's the visiting Browns with a lead.
As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has the look of a game that could very well go down to the wire. Just one point separating these two clubs at the break. But they're ready for the second half, and we are too. As we'll kick it right back out to Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Get me. Let's go. Let's go. Well, the Patriots taking over to start quarter number three. And they do trail, but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it. And that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game? No, but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. They'll start the drive with Harris. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. Again, it's Harris on second down. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? They hand this off to Harris. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 103 yards rushing for him now as he's carried it 16 times. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. That one good for 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've kind of hit the jackpot there. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Back to Stevenson on first down. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game? Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. On the give, this is Harris. And yeah, boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Call it a four-yard pickup, but it leaves him a few inches short here on fourth down. They're going for it. This is Harris. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. He's been tough for this defense to handle over 100 yards. You kind of knew that they were going to him on that play, didn't you? They certainly did. That's one of those situations where you simply say, my best runner over my best blockers, let's go ahead and pick it up. And I don't care if they know it on the other side. Here we come, and they got it done. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and goal from inside the five. Harris. 
And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Damian Harris, his second touchdown of the night, and the Patriots have taken the lead. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. And this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more. And the formula there on the two-point try, they go five wide, not even the option to hand the ball off. They got it. They tried to create space, and there isn't a whole lot of it there. For the defense, what you're trying to do is make sure that if someone, if they're going to catch the ball, make them catch it behind you because they run out of space with the back line. But in this case, the offense figured it out. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be fielded inside the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Ready to take over again on offense. Out comes Cleveland. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10, right at the 30. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Maybe a little frustration starting to creep in. The offensive line hasn't done a great job of protecting him in this game, and there he was, hit again as he threw it. Yeah, another time on his backside, probably starting to get a little frustrated. Got to keep his composure. Can't let the defense know that they're getting to him. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. From the gun, Mayfield. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. Mayfield on first down. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. A gain of six there on first. To throw again on second down. Mayfield. And he's got the hook up to Landry. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots 37. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. A first down throw for Mayfield. Again, he's got that man Landry. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 15-yard line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Meanwhile, Mayfield's throw caught by Higgins. And he takes it inside the 10 to the 8 before he's out of bounds. Seven yards, the pick up there. 
people worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Working with a second and three. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb, and he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first. And this is caught for a Browns touchdown by Landry. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the Browns are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. Well, the hard part's done. Now they just need to split the post, tie it up, but then their defense is going to have to hold up to send it to overtime. Yeah, no matter what. I know there's an inclination in it when you have momentum to go for two here, but if you miss it, you don't give your defense a chance at all. Plus, it's been a good game. I want to see overtime. I'm selfish. <laughs> you obviously don't have a flight to catch. Tomorrow. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. A 10-play drive that time, and it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Taylor decides not to try to return it, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. And he finally is out of bounds, but he's down inside the 20-yard line. 186 yards rushing for him now as he closes in on a 200-yard night. And that run right there, just what the doctor ordered. You're talking about putting it all together for your offense because no big run happens unless everyone does their job. And now you're thinking about ending the football game because you're in field goal range. What a dandy this has been. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. They run with Harris. And he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. On second down, this is Harris. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. A game-winning field goal would be a chip shot from here. Let's see how they play it on first and goal. They'll run with Harris. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. They'll try and run with Harris. And that play's not going to get him in as he stopped right at about the line of scrimmage. They hold him again, and now all of a sudden, it's third and goal at the one. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And that's a touchdown as they broke in our tie here in the final minute of the fourth. 
So the second down run didn't work. They run it again on third down and get in. I wasn't sure if they might pass it, Charles. We know that they like to mix it up down here around the goal line. Yeah, almost felt like the offensive line said, forget mixing it up. Let's call our favorite running play over our best blockers, and let's get this one in. Nick Folk for the point after. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. So that drives seven plays in length, and it's capped off by the late touchdown. It's a seven-point lead here in the final minute of the game. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Fielded just outside the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Browns drive about to get started. Critical condition here, obviously. Got to hope to get something quick right and then maybe take that shot deep. And once they do take the big shot, you've got to worry on defense. Of course, no one getting behind the defense and make it an easy throw. But nowadays, it's not just the ball being tipped in the air and people in the end zone in a cluster. It's that guy that's short of yep. the end zone who comes up and ends up making the play because he goes unguarded. So there's a lot to think about if you're playing defense in this situation. We'll see if they can cover all their bases. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Patriots winners here at home as we say so long from Foxborough.
tonight from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Jarrett Stidham and the New England Patriots taking on Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles. From the area known as Patriot Place, EA Sports set for football at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. All the success in New England over the last few decades, and this crowd has never been more enthusiastic. A moment ago, the Pats emerged from their locker room. They are set as they'll square off with the Philadelphia Eagles.
Here's the putter, Jake Bailey, ready to do the honors. And we are underway in Foxborough. This one fielded at the five. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. They'll throw on first down with Hertz. That's caught by the big tight end, Dallas Goddard. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Hurts. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Here's second and ten. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. An extra corner comes on now for the Patriots. D on third down. Here's Hurts to throw. Open man, that's Devontae Smith. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves them just short for fourth down. On third down, you'll give them that. You just want to make sure that you play the first down line. They were able to get him down and force the punt. Stidham going to lead the Pats up first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. They'll run with a former member of the Crimson Tide, Damian Harris. And he's dropped just shy of the 25 at the 24. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. They'll run. Here's Harris. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. That's going to be caught. It's Jacoby Myers. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Oh, he didn't spike it. He faked it. Pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Javon Hargrave, the defensive tackle, getting in there for a loss of five. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Now Stidham. This goes to a former Eagle, Nelson Aguilar. 
And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. Well, from their point of view, this game could not be starting out much better, could it? Force a punt on defense, and now they're moving it crisply on offense. Crisply, I like that. Like yeah, that? yeah, moving it very, very well. Looks like the defense on their heels a little bit. You put a score in here, long way to go, but you're right, that's a heck of a start. Yeah, and I think this is where a play caller is looking at his play sheet and saying, do I have that dagger play? Do I have that play and just finish them off right now? Because I think they'd love to gain that big advantage early. Harris going to get it again on second down. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. But I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. And he'll slice his way down to the 30 with a pickup of seven. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. It's nice every now and then in this game not to see people overthink it. Just hand it to the old reliable guy, let him pick up the first down. On first down, Harris. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four, second and six. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. This is Harris. Then he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. They run with Harris. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. 50 yards rushing for him now on what was his 10th carry of the ball game. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Stevenson now on first and 10. And he's going to work this one down to about the five. Give him seven yards on the carry, and it will take us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes on the clock in what's been a scoreless first half. On second down now, it's Harris, and he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Here we go now on first and goal. This is Harris, and he's in. Touchdown, Patriots. Damian Harris taking it in from a yard out, and they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. Everybody in the stadium knew what they were going to do right there, CD. Three tight ends on the field, all that extra bulk, and they run it in. And you saw where that one went, right? You run it over your best blocker. I can just see the head coach right now. I want to run this one over the big boy. And they got it done. Nick Folk for the point after. And he gets it to make it 7 nothing Patriots. And what a drive that was. 16 plays all told. And it was Damian Harris who finished things off with a touchdown run. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down.
Single, 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 single. Throwing is Hurts. Smith catches left side. And all the way down to the 12. On, a big play there on the catch and run. We know he's good at catching the football, but then after the catch, he's got escapability. Not only that, he's got some toughness as well because you know he's coached very hard to make sure he battles through, breaks tackles, and then they finish with, but don't fumble the football. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Steps away. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. Ask any pass rusher and they'll tell you any quarterback who lines up every time and goes straight back in the pocket, that's who they want. But when they have to deal with a Jalen Hurts who may come... And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Miles Sanders taking it in from two yards out. And the Eagles are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. Elliott good with a PAT. And we are tied here in the second quarter. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it was Miles Sanders who finished it off with a touchdown run. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And this will be brought out to the 25 as Taylor elects to not return it. The Patriots with the football here late in this first half as they take over with exactly one minute to go. They'll start on the ground with Harris. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. And he's going to have a first down, but not sure it'll matter as the clock will continue to run. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now they'll throw it with Stidham. It's caught by Aguilar. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Now the Patriots will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. On first and 10, it's Stidham. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked off at the 40. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. The Eagles offense set to begin their next drive. And with only four seconds on the clock, time likely for just one snap of the football. Flushed out right. And now look at this, big gain, but a fumble. And it's picked up by the Patriots. So a touchdown apiece, that's what we have to show at. All right, hang on, we'll jump over halftime. Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. Taylor now to return it. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. 
Jarrett Stidham in the Pats set to take over. And he's had some time to chew on that interception he threw on his last drive back in the first half. Well, normally we say, want well, to get him right back out on the field and play again, right? But as you mentioned, had the halftime, had to stew about it a little bit. Maybe he'll have a chance to relax a little and kind of laugh and chuckle and let it go. He'll hope to respond positively here to start the third quarter. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. 75 yards rushing for him now on 17 carries. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. They hand this off to Harris. And he's across the 40, three extra yards to the 43. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Here's Harris. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. And credit the tackle to Derek Barnett. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. On the give, this is Harris. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support. And I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. And he will have a Patriots first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and 10. This is Stevenson. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. Now Harris. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Five yards remain on second down. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And finding room to work, he's down to the two-yard line. A good run on first down, and now they contemplate a second and goal situation. Harris, and he is in. Touchdown, New England. Damian Harris, his second touchdown of the night, and the Patriots have taken the lead. But just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in, have to report like they're eligible, but all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking and getting their runner across the goal line. Full connects on the extra point, and that makes the score 14 to seven. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This will be fielded inside the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. 
And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and indeed, he gets enough for the first down. And yeah, that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about, and you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it, and oftentimes, knock it away. Hertz gets this to Sanders, and this time he's able to take it down to the 42. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Hertz going to give it to Sanders on the option, and he will have a first down here at about the 40. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Hertz sets up to throw it. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. Now the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. They'll drop to throw. It's caught, Smith. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Eagle football here as we get you reset. They face a critical third down now, needing a score here in the late going. He's back to throw. Open man, it's Rager, he's got it. And the Eagles are gonna have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Touchdown, Eagles! Jalen Rager from eight yards out. And the Eagles are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Taken at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. New England's offense set to go. And that last drive, it was all about the ground game, ground and pound. And I don't care how we're playing the game these days, offensive linemen still want to fire out and smack the guy opposite them and move the football on the ground. They feel better about that. That's what they want to do. That's how they want to play, and that's how they got it done. Yeah, they got it for a touchdown last drive. Let's see what happens here. They run with Harris. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Alex Singleton, a former Canadian League star, in on the stop. On second down, this is Harris. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. 145 yards on the ground for him so far. On third down, here's Harris. And that will get him another first down, but the clock's certainly working against him. 
When the 4-3 defense is functioning really well, you know who stays what we call clean and no one gets to him? The guy playing the middle linebacker position, the guy we call Mike. That means the defensive front is eating up all the blocks and just let him go to the football and make a play. And with inside of 10 seconds, eight to be precise, we get whistles and a timeout on the field. Now Stidham, they'll roll him out right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Anthony Harris. And he will be taken down, and that means we are headed to overtime. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. Taken in at the three. And he'll get to the 30-yard line before going out of bounds. And Philadelphia's offense ready to go again. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. On first and 10, it's Hurts. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Goddard. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. But first down, Hurts. He delivers another to Goddard, complete. Seven yards, the pick up there. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. It's a second down run with Sanders. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. And that's exactly what offenses try to avoid by using motion and throwing different formations up. They hate when he can draw a bead on the play, get a running start, and make a big play behind the line of scrimmage as he did just there. They'll look to throw. That swung out wide to Sanders. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as he'll be marked down a yard or two past the marker following a gain of six. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. Hurts a handoff to Sanders. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play there. Second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Second down. Here's Hurts. Over the middle complete. That's Smith. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 34-yard line. They'll set up to throw. Open man is Goddard, the tight end. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. Shaping up to be a very efficient opening drive here in overtime. And can you feel the tension building? Because I'm feeling it, all right? I've got the, I've got the sweaty palms here <laughs> with each play because of the enormity of what's going on. Each play means so much in overtime, and they're handling it well as this drive continues. Seven yards, the pick up there. Second down and three. They'll look to throw again. On the move. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. 
Now another timeout called for by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. In need of a third and ten conversion to keep this opening drive of OT alive. He'll look to throw. Over the middle, he's got Watkins. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. Now back to throw. And he is in for the score. And it is absolute stunned silence here as they win it on the road in overtime. As the fans exit back out through the turnstiles, not happy looks on their faces. Feel like they probably let this one slip away at home in overtime. I would agree with that, and, and their unhappiness hurts the guys at the concession stands on the way out, right? <laughs> not stopping to buy something for the kids. They just want to get home. But what a dramatic way to finish this bad boy off. I mean, this game was dramatic all the way through. That's why we got to overtime. And then to go ahead and finish it this way, the fans streaming out unhappy. But the team that came in here and won this one on the road, they sprinted to their locker room. And speaking of buying things, dinner on you tonight, Davis. I kind of figured that was coming. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. From Foxborough. Good night, everybody.
tonight. From Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. It's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports. We'll see Jared Stidham and the New England Patriots taking on Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. EA Sports coverage of the NFL has us roughly midway between Boston and Providence. Everybody knows it as Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. A moment ago, the pride of Massachusetts, the Patriots, introduced to this, as always, sold-out crowd as they get set to go head-to-head -head with the Cincinnati Bengals.
Here's the putter, Jake Bailey, ready to do the honors. And we are underway in Foxborough. Brandon Wilson to return it. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. He completes it to Boyd. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Second down at five. From the shotgun, it's Burrow. Got an open man, that's C.J. Uzama. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. They will throw on first down with Burrow. That one taken in by T. Higgins. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. Well, that certainly has to feel good. And it's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. He will find his man Chase complete. And all the way in for a Cincinnati score. Jamar Chase, 43 yards. And the Bengals are going to take a first quarter lead. Well, that's how they envisioned it, get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted, was it an audible, or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. Evan McPherson now for the PAT. And he's got it to make it 7-0 Bengals. A drive there of just four plays, and it ends with a Bengals score. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. Taylor now from the end zone. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Stidham going to lead the Pats up first and 10 at their own 22. They'll run with a former member of the Crimson Tide, Damian Harris. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Well, how many times do we say in this game is speed kills, and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty, can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary, and that led to a really nice gain. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 46 yards rushing for him now on just his first three carries. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Harris. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are. Stay with who you know. 
and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Yeah, the Patriots are going to have a first and goal as he's able to take this inside the 10 to the 8. First and goal and a chance to get that initial touchdown right back. This is Harris. And he'll work his way closer to the goal line as he's got five down to the three. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. They'll go again from the three here on second and goal. They'll try to run with Harris, and he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Damian Harris, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Patriots are within an extra point of tying this one up. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight-ahead power, and they got it done. Nick Folk for the point after. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was Damian Harris who finished things off with a touchdown run. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. The return man, Wilson. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Joe Burrow trots out again with the rest of his offense. And he had the touchdown of the last drive, also four for four. Very, very effective. What does he need to do to translate that forward into this drive? Not think that what he saw in coverages last time is exactly what he's going to get again. He's got to play ahead and start, and start thinking to himself, okay, we just did that. What are they going to take away now? What do we go to as a counter and continue to encourage his offensive line to continue to give him time? They were really good on the last drive. From the 30 on second down, Burrow. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. He'll drop this one down to mix it. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. One of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, Try to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game? That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. First down, here's Burrow. He gets this in the hands of Mixon. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. And his throw's gonna be incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Here we go. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. He's got exactly what you're looking for, the ability to not just diagnose a play and quickly, but to make a play as well. Nice job there tackling him for a loss. Open man is Uzama. And he's got this down to the 35. 
I like how they worked the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here's a give to Mixon. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Big Christian Barmore was there on the tackle. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. All knotted up at seven. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. I'm wondering if the same thing went through your mind as mine. When I see a big man like that make a catch, all I keep thinking to myself is, big man with football. Look out, everyone. He may not juke you a whole lot, right? He may not run past you because of his size. You're talking about a guy weighing in the 270 range. But, boy, once he gets his mitts on the ball, he's going to be tough to bring down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And that's caught one more time by Boyd. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. And Burrow going to throw again. That's to Chase. He's got it. Touchdown, Cincinnati. Jamar Chase. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Bengals have taken the lead. So they've had two drives, and he's had the two receiving touchdowns. And how about a game plan where you decide to force feed or feature someone, and it works? First two drives, as you noted, end up in touchdown passes. I think they're going to keep going to him until a defense makes any kind of an adjustment. And McPherson on for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. Taylor decides not to try to return it, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. Damian Harris to the Patriot offense, ready to take over again. Now the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield and get the ball in his hands in open space. And just don't get totally away from running it, because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with the run so far. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Working with second and five now. A give to Harris, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. 88 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. They'll run on first down. Harris, and they will only muster a yard here to the 38. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with 23 seconds to go till halftime. Now it's second and nine. Get that quarterback, D line. Get that quarterback, D line. D line, get that quarterback. Now it's Stidham. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. 
Chidabe Awuzie with a pick. And a potential turning point as they'll get the football in very good field position late in this first half. An unfortunate sequence there, trying to get points before intermission, but now the interception, and their opponents have a chance to possibly pad their lead. Yeah, they had an opportunity there, and they weren't able to capitalize on it, and that's something that could come back and haunt them later. They're begging their defense now to keep them from scoring before the half ends. Give him nine there on the first down completion. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. So we have reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Bengals out in front. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point. And you got to expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, let's get it right back out to Brandon God. The Patriots trailing here, but they will have the football first as the third quarter is underway. And this taken in at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. For the Patriots taking over to start quarter number three. Stidham going to lead the Pats up first and 10 at their own 23. They'll start on the ground with Harris. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Harris. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Let's face it, when you have a guy who can pick up those types of runs and keep the chains moving or stay ahead of the chains, you're making everyone else on offense happy because you're opening things up to allow for a whole lot of different play calls. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They hand this off to Harris. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. On third down, it's Harris. And he gets this only to the 41, not near enough for the first. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave him with a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stuffed them for almost no gain. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And the Bengals are going to get it back in terrific field position. Being just short of midfield, they decide to take a crack at it on fourth down. They don't come through. Sometimes it's just showing confidence in your defense. You know that they're good, and they'll take care of you. A lot of coaches during the week will announce to their team, we're going to be aggressive, guys. We're going to go for it. Hey, defense, you got me? <laughs> a little bit of a challenge to them to see if they'll pick up the rest of the team. We'll see how they respond now. Mixon with a first down carry. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. 
In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. The Burroughs throw into the hands of Sample. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-get situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. Burrow on third down, complete to his tight end sample. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. This will be a five-yard pickup as they move it from the 20 to the 15. It'll be a gain of five on the play, and it'll also be the final play of this third quarter. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and five. Burrow looking to pass over the middle. That's caught by Chase. And the Bengals are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll give it to Mixon. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Another try for Mixon, and that'll move him a little closer as he takes it from the seven down to the four-yard line. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. Here's Burrow. And that'll be caught. Touchdown, Bengals. It's Tyler Boyd. Four yards on the touchdown grab, and the Bengals are able to grow their lead. But that makes this a two-score ball game. And, you know, the way this thing has been going, Charles, two scores kind of feels like three or four scores. Yeah, that's a great observation. It's been a heck of a battle, hasn't it? And points have been at a premium throughout this game. So you have to wonder, is this going to be too much for them to overcome? Extra point by McPherson, up and good. And it's now 21-7. to seven. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. New England trying to get to place on offense. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> offense take care of the defense, defense take care of the offense. That didn't happen on the last possession. This is a chance for them to pick themselves back up and help their team. Yeah, we'll see if they can recoup and recover. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Out of the gun, Stidham. He's got it complete to Aguilar. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Stidham. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Cheetah Bay Awuzie with a pick. But here in the fourth quarter, defensively, you know that you're just going to blanket the field with defensive backs and say, OK, take your best shot. And that time, it's intercepted. And we've often seen teams go into the prevent early, way too early. And sometimes they get too soft in their coverages. But not in this case. They understood the situation and played it with the proper aggression. They try to eat some clock with Mixon. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. 
And now just three seconds before the two-minute warning, they're going to call a timeout here defensively. And they'll try to squeeze in one more play here before the two-minute warning. Back to Mixon on second down. And he'll get this forward only for about a yard as that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Boyd's the target, and he has it over the middle. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And he'll take it across the 50 and into New England territory. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him. He ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Back to Mixon on second down. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. And sometimes things come together exactly like you want. It's not just been the volume of carries he's had in this contest. It's been the production. Tonight, from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, it's a special prime time edition of the NFL on EA Sports.
we'll see Jared Stidham and the New England Patriots taking on Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys. Well, the roof is closed, but as you can probably tell, the mouths of these Cowboy fans could not be more wide open. It is a frenzied AT&T Stadium in Arlington. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and the New England Patriots. Here's the punter, Jake Bailey, ready to do the honors. And this one is underway here on EA Sports. This is Tony Pollard. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. First look at the Cowboys' offense as Dak Prescott gets ready to guide them. It's been a lot of fun watching him advance in his career. Many people question his ability to throw the football coming out of Mississippi State. He's conclusively answered that question. In addition, a very strong runner and an even better leader. So first and 10 now from the 30. Prescott. They'll set up the screen to Elliott. And he goes out right around the 39. A good pick up there on first as the screen pass gets him eight. So Charles, first drive here, a little safe completion underneath. Maybe get some rhythm, get your feet wet, so to speak. I agree, and I like it because it's a lot like a basketball game when you're getting started and you pass the ball around so everyone touches it early and gets involved in the game. In this case, it's not just dumping it to a back and he's able to run with the ball but you get your offensive linemen involved because they get to get out and run and hit people in the open field everyone getting their feet wet early and he'll be taken down but not before he works it past the 50. good job there to locate his tight end charles in the middle of the field yeah he has good pass catching abilities and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. You can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. First down, Prescott. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Elliott. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. Looking to throw again on second down. Prescott over the middle complete. That's Schultz. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots 17-yard line. Okay, I'm not so great at math, but I just looked over at our statistician, Marvin, and he signaled to me five for five to get <laughs> things started here on this opening drive. Where I come from, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. Now, what do you do defensively to adjust? Well, this is where you've got to make a decision as, your defensive, as a defensive coordinator. Do you really get after the quarterback? Or maybe you tighten down on the receivers, bump them off of their routes, chip away at their timing so things aren't as precise as they've been in so far in this game. To the air again, Prescott. And that's Elliott, complete. Touchdown, Cowboys! Ezekiel Elliott, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Cowboys have taken the early lead. Getting your back involved, what's the importance there in the passing game? Well, oftentimes you can create mismatches because who's going to cover him? And you get him into space, which is where he likes to operate with the ball in his hands. Oftentimes makes people miss, gets that run after the catch, and off he goes. And into the end zone. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-0 Cowboys. 
So that drive in total eight plays. And it culminates in a Dallas touchdown. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. And this will be brought out to the 25 as Taylor elects to not return it. Stidham going to lead the Pats up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. First carry for Damian Harris, the Alabama man. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. Credit the tackle there to Jordan Lewis. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Here's second and nine. On the give, this is Harris. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. And looks like they've got six DBs on the field here for a third and nine. They'll run with Harris. Fights him off. And he's going to have a Patriots first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Now a first down carry for Harris. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. On second down, this is Harris. Or second and six.
yards shy of the first down marker, and now it's third down. This is Harris. to go in half number one. Go in the first half. And... The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked up by J.C. Jackson. And the Pats will take over possession here up at the 44. Well, there definitely was some juice on that pass. And while tight ends don't always have the same reputation for hands as wide receivers do, in this case, that ball was expected to be caught. And he sneaks it for a couple here, second down. Typically, we think it's the strong. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? at the break, but they're ready for the second half, and we are too, as well. Okay, coach, yeah, adjustments likely. Contest so far, and he won't quite make it to the 25. Oh, yeah. The Patriots taking over to start quarter number three. 
Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. They'll start the drive with. Second and five. Now here's another carry for Harris. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Heavy set out there on third and one. They run with Harris. And he will not get there as they stop him short right around the four-yard line. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. They run for it with Harris. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Now a handoff, Stevenson. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. What's that, five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Again, pick up on first. Yeah, the Cowboys here on third down, bringing in an extra defensive back. Able to push forward. Long drive going. And he's got this pretty close to a first down at the Cowboys 32. It's a six yard run, leaves him with about a foot or so here still to go to hit the marker with third down coming up. They hand this off to Harris. And he picks up the first. Well, on EA Sports. Here's Harris. Plenty of time here in the fourth quarter, and just a
tonight from Mexico City. It's the NFL International Series on EA Sports. We'll see Jared Stidham and the New England Patriots taking on Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. From the oldest capital city in the Americas, founded in 1325, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Mexico City. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Baltimore Ravens and the New England Patriots. Here's the putter, Jake Bailey, ready to do the honors. And we are underway from Mexico City. And this taken in at the goal line. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. First carry for the former Buckeye, J.K. Dobbins. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. Now Dobbins again on second down. Looking for a crease, can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. From the gun, Jackson rolling to his left. First down and more for Jackson. And all the way up to the 45-yard line. That's something you have to be aware of as a defense and have to find a way to account for him. And if you're not going to use a spy, you're telling your guys to keep your eyes on him because when he breaks out and makes plays like that, all he does is hurt you. Have to at least be able to contain him somewhat. There they could not. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Throwing quickly. That's caught by Brown out wide. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So as they move forward defensively, Got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. That ball caught. It's Mark Andrews, the tight end. Let's go. Let's do it. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw. And they hooked up there for a first down. Excellent job pushing through tacklers that time to pick up six. They'll go option on second down, right side. The quick feet by and all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. It's a scintillating run by Lamar Jackson, and the Ravens have taken the early lead. Well, CD, that was a well-orchestrated drive by Lamar Jackson. Yeah, and how about the way he capped it off, too? Orchestrate the drive and then let everybody know exactly who the guy is on the field. You've got to watch on every play. Finishes it off with a touchdown run. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And the Ravens lead at 7-0. So that drive goes eight plays. And it was capped off by the touchdown run that came from Lamar Jackson.
Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. On the return, it's Taylor. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So out comes the Patriots offense as they'll get their first shot at things here. They'll be let out by their quarterback at 6-2 out of Auburn. It's Jared Stidham. For a brief time, he was thought to be a possible successor to Tom Brady while he was still in New England, but that didn't materialize. But opportunity may still knock for him to start in the NFL today. Definitely has the arm and mobility to make plays against NFL defenses. All he needs now is consistency. Stidham going to lead the Pats up first and 10, right at the 30. They'll run with a former member of the Crimson Tide, Damian Harris. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Linebacker Patrick Queen bringing him down. Again, it's Harris on second down. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Yards and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. They run with downfield and score, so they knew that this drive. And boy, that was important to pick up that first down there and keep this one going. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. Eight yards to go on second down. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. They'll run on first down. Harris. 42 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. And give him about four on the play, but he's marked short, so it'll be third and about the length of the football. Two minutes on the clock, second quarter, 7 nothing ball game. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Well, if they continue to run the football this strong, right up the middle, I don't know if they can wait till halftime to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right at them and right up the middle. On second down, this is Harris. And he'll take this one inside the 10 down to the 8. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. On the handoff, Stevenson. And this effort won't be enough as they rally up to stop him a couple of yards short. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts. 
as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. They'll try and run with a fullback, Johnson. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. They'll try and run with Harris. And he's over the line and into the end zone for a Patriot score. Damian Harris taking it in from two yards out. And the Patriots are an extra point away from tying the ball game here in the final minute of the first half. Nick Folk for the point after. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. And what a drive that was. 16 plays all told. And it was Damian Harris who finished things off with a touchdown run. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. On the return, Devin Duvernay. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Raven offense going to take over late in this first half. And they've got a little over 40 seconds to work with if they want to try to put something together. Meanwhile, Jackson's throw into the hands of Andrews. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as it'll come with 36 ticks to go in half number one. They'll throw on first down with Jackson. Steps away to his left. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. Well, we've seen Jackson already have success in the first half running the football, and he gets good yardage on the ground again there. I mean, how – I know it's a $64,000 question, <laughs> CD, but how do they contain him better? You have to win against the blockers ahead of you. If those guys even occupy a defender for even a half a second, then Lamar Jackson is gone. You've got to take those blockers and move them so that you have clear vision of Lamar Jackson, and hopefully you can hem him in. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. to so a good kick there, and they put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But in the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. Be able to knock the ball through the post and take the three. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Not Either the, way. Not the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And this will go as a short gain on what will be the final act of this first half. You want the third quarter already? No problem. Let's do it. The Patriots trailing here, but they will have the football first as the third quarter is underway. No run back here to begin the half, and we will start at the 25-yard line. The Patriots taking over to start quarter number three. It's been a tight game to this point. What do they need to do, Charles, to break through in the second half and take the lead? Well, I think the first thing they need to do is thank their defense for keeping them in this game. And you know what I think the defense is saying back to them? Why don't you guys focus on getting some first downs, put some drives together, give us a little bit of a break here. If we can get some rest, we'll play even better for you. And oh, by the way, pay off a few of those drives with some points too the previous run good for nine here's second and a yard they'll keep it on the ground Harris again and he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38 yard line second and one and people want to run the football 
This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They wind up losing a couple there, so they go behind the original line of scrimmage, and now third and 11 coming up. Stidham from the shotgun. The connection here with Nelson Aguilar. And he will have a Patriots first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. Oh, he fakes a spike. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. It was Justin Houston, the native of Statesboro, Georgia, with a sack. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Here's Stidham to throw. Finds a seam inside the 40. And finally taken down at the 35-yard line. That's a good bounce back play right there after taking a sack on first down. Didn't quite get it to the marker, but now they're in a much better spot for a third and short yardage call. If you're the offensive coordinator, you like looking at that. And he lost the football, and it's picked up by the Ravens. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. An option handoff here to Dobbins. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Now Jackson taps his forward jet sweep. They got five through the air. Last play, now five on the ground. First and ten. Dobbins going to take the handoff on the option. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. From the gun, it's Jackson. And he's got his receiver. That's Sammy Watkins. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 44-yard line. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Throwing is Jackson. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. They go back to the ground with Dobbins, and he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. And Brandon, this is the time of the game when Jackson could really take over. He's got the defense's legs a little bit tired. He's got them on the run. Yeah, this defense looks gassed, and you're exactly right. Second half with the lead, this is when Lamar Jackson seems to thrive. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Jackson. This is complete to Watkins on the slant. 
And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And all the way down inside the five to the four. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down, <laughs> stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions, they are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. Now it's Jackson. And that'll be caught. Touchdown, Ravens. It's Hollywood Brown. Four yards on the touchdown grab as the Ravens push further out in front. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Tucker now for the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive, and it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Taylor now to return it. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. And now out come the Patriots. And you figure after giving up that last touchdown, you know, they trail by two scores here in the fourth quarter. This drive becomes very critical. On first down, Stidham. He'll buy some time right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And it's knocked away and incomplete. They'll probably spend a little extra time dissecting the game film after this when I think the part of their plan was to hit them over the top of the deep ball. They've been unsuccessful all night. Here's Stidham, rolling to his right. Now a leaping catch, he's got it. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. From the gun, it's Stidham. They'll roll him out right. On the run, he'll let this go deep right side. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Second and 10. Stidham. That ball's caught. Aguilar right side. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 41-yard line. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Patriots with a football as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets it down to the 30 there. Late in the game, defense trying to avoid a big play. He's able to work out of the passing game, turn it into a run, pick up the first and stop the clock as well. And you know in this situation, everything is sped up. The intensity, the thinking, everyone's movements. But for a quarterback, he has to continue to be what we call a flatliner. Level in everything he does and read the clock, feel it in the pocket, and go at the appropriate time. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Now Stidham. 
And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hands team ready. No doubt about it. And a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Popular down near the goal line, quick slant. Nice job there to get in, knock it away. It was, and one of the other things you're concerned about when you throw that route is to make sure your offensive linemen use their leverage to get the hands of the defensive front down so you can throw it through that little bit of crowd and get it to the receiver. In this event, they did, but a nice play by the defender knocking it away. Lamar Jackson marching back onto the field. And he's been fun. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And barring mistakes, they should be able to kneel this one out and finish it off. And there's only one timeout remaining on the defensive side of the ball, so that doesn't really come into play either. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Jackson on the give to Dobbins. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to bring up a third and about seven left. Throwing now is Jackson. This one caught by his tight end, Andrews. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And this defense, they needed that one more stop to have any chance, but that completion, that's likely going to seal their fate. And you could hear it in your voice, that one more stop. <laughs> I feel their pain. Oh, it was so important. They just didn't get it done. Wow, what a way to finish this one off. Well, as always, partner, an extreme pleasure to share a booth with you. I, I have to say, I am impressed at your discipline because you came...